Hey everybody, Ted Forbes again, and in this tutorial we are going to look at some of the rich media support that HTML5 has, and namely we're going to talk about audio files. So before we get cranking here, let's go ahead and open TextMate, and I'm going to open a new document, and let's do a save as, and let's call this audio.html. I'll put that on the desktop, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and use Text Expander um, and put in the HTML5 framework. A little shortcut there. And let's give this a title. Let's call this audio example. And we're good to go. Now, before we get going here, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, uh, how in the past we've done audio files within a web page. Now, in the early days of the internet, about all you could do was put a link in there for the, you know, the the, uh, the site visitor to go in and download that MP3 file and go put it in a player of some kind. And I remember at the time, you know, we all thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had some kind of player that we could embed into the page, and you know, it should just be a visual element on the page and part of part of the design. And when Flash came along, this this certainly helped. Uh, Flash had audio support, uh, and you could actually, via the plugin, embed the player into the page. And this was fine. Um, the downside of it is, or was, that you or still is, that you have to develop a player from the ground up, especially before they had uh, pre built components in Flash. And so, you know, this was a little bit of a pain. Uh, you had to actually go in and style it and, you know, uh, do the graphics and everything. And it was a lot of work. But now, what is really cool is HTML5 has native support for audio and video. And so, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to embed audio files. What we're going to use is a tag, and it's going to be the audio tag. So just A-U-D-I-O, and this tag does close. And uh, the reason is, is because uh, when we get into the browser support, which will be the next video, I'll talk about some other tags that can go inside of the audio tag. But we're going to need an attribute here, and this attribute is going to be the source, SRC, equals, a lot like an image tag, equals, and then in quotes, you're going to put something like example.mp3. Okay, now, <clears throat> this implies that I have an mp3 file with that name in the same directory as this HTML file, in this case the desktop. Uh, I do not, and uh, you probably don't either. And if you're coding along, you're probably thinking, well, hey, you know, I want to be able to have something too. So I have been gracious and I have put something online, and you're welcome to use this link. The URL for this audio file is http colon slash slash classes dot tedforbes dot com slash examples slash class underscore ex dot mp3 and that will indeed work so anyway if I go ahead and open this file in the browser and I'm going to use Safari to do this uh, and if you're working along you probably want to use a WebKit based browser so either Safari or Chrome we're going to get into Firefox and multiple browsers in, in the next video but for now make sure you got a WebKit browser um, but as you can see here nothing happened okay and the first time I did this I thought well that that's you know that didn't work um, actually it did uh, the audio file is there however we can't see it and we didn't tell it to play it okay so so it's there, but it's not playing. And so what we need is some more attributes to go inside of that. So let's go back over to our HTML example. And I'm going to add an attribute in here. And uh, this is a Boolean attribute, which I'll talk about in just a second. But basically, it means there's no value attached to it. So you can just write autoplay. Um, you don't have to have an equals and anything in quotes because you don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now when I go back over to the browser and hit refresh, you can, in fact, hear that indeed we have an audio file playing. It's our short little jazzy example, but uh, it did play the audio file. I still don't see anything, and we can enable that too. So if I go back over and next to autoplay, I'm going to do a space, and then I'm going to write the word controls. Uh, controls. And now when I save this and go back over, you can see now that it does autoplay, and we have a set of controls. Now, these are going to look different browser to browser. So if you're using Chrome, you're going to see a slightly different look. This is the default player that the browser has and puts into it. Okay, And so in Safari, in this case, we have a rewind 30 second button. I have a start and stop button that turns into a pause button. And I can also play that and I can you know click in here and bounce around the track in the, uh, by the, the playhead there. And I have a volume on and off. So you know it's a very basic set of controls, but it does in fact work. Now, one thing you'll also note, let me hit refresh again, is that I have autoplay enabled. So let me do that so you can see. It does, in fact, start playing the file. Um, this is kind of an example where I think you're going to want to consider the user experience. Autoplay is great to have. There's another one I can write in here called loop, L-O-O-P. And what this will do is loop the audio file. So if I go back in here and hit refresh, it'll load it up. And when I get to the end of the audio file, you can see there's a little bit of silence in the audio file. 
but it does in fact loop it. Okay, so this you're going to find gets annoying really fast. So let's, here, let me turn that off for a second. Um, these I would use with caution because uh, let's say, you know, let's consider the user for a second. Um, these can be a bit annoying. So if somebody's pulling up your web page and they're at work, um, sometimes you don't want an audio file to start playing or if you're at home and the kids are asleep, something like that. And you probably don't want it to loop, uh, particularly if you don't have controls in there at all. So, you know, these I would use sparingly and, you know, with a little bit of uh, sensitivity. So I'm going to go ahead and leave controls in there. Um, so anyway, these are what are known as Boolean tags. I'm going to show you one more that uh, comes in pretty handy. Um, sometimes you want to buffer an audio file or a video file when we get into that. And what that means, what buffering is, is it basically means it's going to start preloading the file. So I don't have it set to autoplay, but what's going to happen is when the user loads this page, it's going to start loading the audio file. So by the time they hit the play button, it'll already be loaded. So their experience is, you know, faster. And uh, so it, the way of doing this is there's a Boolean attribute for this called auto buffer. Um, and that would turn that on. The problem with auto buffer as a Boolean attribute is that uh, most browsers by default already have the auto buffering enabled. Okay, so you don't need to tell it to do it again. There are times though where you probably want to not auto buffer. Okay, and let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a page of lectures that people can listen to, and you have 20 of them on the page, and each one of them is about an hour long. Well, you don't want that to start preloading all the audio files because it's just going to suck the user's bandwidth. So that might be a situation where you want to turn it off. Now these. Are Boolean attributes, like I mentioned ago, yeah, a minute ago. That's B O O L E A N, and Boolean basically means true or false. It's on or it's off. And uh, unfortunately, we have a situation here where we need, want to turn this off, and it's just on by default. So if I put auto buffer in there, if I take that out, it's still going to auto buffer. And because it's Boolean, like if you think back, like just how a computer works, you know, it's 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 bits, it's ones and zeros, and that's what Boolean means. It's either on or off. It's not a value. And so you know, if I go in here and say auto buffer equals none, that won't work because it still sees the audio buffer is there. It's a Boolean attribute. So I can say, you know, don't with an exclamation point and uh, it still won't do anything. Of course, that was kind of sort of a not funny joke. But anyway, uh, what we're going to need to use is a different attribute for this. And this is the preload attribute. So preload. So if I don't want it to preload, uh, preload accepts a value. So you can put the equals and the quotes. And this actually accepts three different values. You can write none in here. And this will, in fact, not preload the file. Okay. The other two that it accepts are auto, which, you know, is kind of uh, pointless because it, you know, by default is going to do it. And then the third is actually called metadata, which we'll get into much later. But um, anyway, if you want to turn the preloading off, this is how you do it. You use the preload variable and you set that to none. So if you know you forget this later and you're searching on the internet and you find that auto buffer that's going to give you problems if it's there. So anyway, um, that more or less is all the things we can do to control an audio file just on the browser level. Now, uh, in the next movie, we're going to get into multiple browser support, which is a separate issue unto itself. So we're going to discuss that the next time. So anyway, that's it for now. And thank you for watching.